Hello, welcome to an INFJ Ramble. It's another beautiful day. I was thinking about it. I think if you've watched my previous videos, I am highly fascinated with human interaction and connection and relationships. I think it's important to take the time to, I don't know, think about these things. I, I was thinking about it. Each person is a universe and each person is unexplored territory, but I think the more you like explore yourself through these interactions, um, you can kind of get the gist on how to like adapt to different people in order to harmonize, in order to construct, in order to destruct, you know? And both ways are correct. I mean, that is creation. It's a constant process of constructing and destructing. But I guess the, the main thing I wanted to touch on is, well, choose people who choose you. That's it. Choose people who choose you. Everything else is, I feel, a waste of energy, a waste of time, and a not worthwhile investment. And you can tell early on if someone chooses you. I mean, what are some of the signs? Some of the signs is they reciprocate in physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual way. There is a organic connection. If something feels unaligned, then you gotta think, uh, is this really worth my time? It just takes so much energy to maintain, you know what I mean, relationships? It takes so much energy to maintain and it just doesn't make sense to me anymore to, to invest in someone that, you know, is not as invested in the relationship as me. And t for me, to be honest, I... I prefer platonic relationships. Um, you know, I don't really, I don't know, it's weird. It's like I value people and I value individuals, um, but not on a sexual level, if that makes sense. So already, if somebody is sexually interested in me, I, I will probably eliminate them as potential prospects to enter into a relationship with and that's just me personally everybody is different some people are still exploring sexuality and you know they're just looking to have like you know one night stands and stuff and that's totally fine if that's where they're at but for me personally it's too shallow I I, I want something beyond physical um, I want someone who can help me grow or, or stimulate me on a mental emotional spiritual level talking about emotions so if you keep it plutonic I feel like the emotions may not be as heavily invested you know I mean I could be wrong in my assessment but you know you don't get so emotionally heavy in the relationship because it's you know a more universal type of connection you're not looking to I don't know parasite off of this person and you're not looking for them to parasite off of you. I have no idea if I'm making sense. All I know is that, <clears throat> you know, knowing that everything is temporary just doesn't make sense to get so emotionally involved. And I think that's what it is. Like, it, it goes from like, um, you know, you start from physical, which is really dense, emotional, which is, which are basically, um, mental constructs so I actually look for mental and spiritual stimulation and that's just me um, if you cannot provide that then I probably will not spend time with you and even if you can provide that knowing that everything is temporary I just kind of like I'm getting in the habit of taking things as they come and as they go without too much attachment to it because everybody has their own life to live and everybody is experiencing and experimenting and exploring, you know, based on what they need to acquire in order to know, in order to grow. And it's so 
it's so like high, how do I say it? like individualistic that you know you can't you can't try to manipulate or control that you know what I mean I mean you can but it's just going to end up in it's going to end up backfiring on you so just allow people to be allow people to come and go if they choose to enter your experience and you guys have some type of um, commonality is awesome if not then elimination process occurs and when you meet someone that you jive with on the surface I mean there's different levels and degrees but if they have habits or lifestyles that don't really like mesh well with yours then that's another telltale sign to of illumination you know what I mean because the way someone presents themselves to you initially I feel like they, they put on a mask because they want to impress you but if you penetrate the mask which we are adept at doing you'll notice like subtle things that may or may not be in alignment with you and that can help with the elimination process and it's not personal and it doesn't have to be emotional unless you choose to emotionally attach yourself or invest in this person but I'm getting to a point where it's it's not even really worthwhile to me to invest that much of myself in anyone um, I haven't met anyone who is willing to invest that much in me. I mean, me and my partner keep choosing each other. But as far as outside of that sphere or that scope of my existence, I haven't really met anyone who is interested in that kind of consistency or longevity. And that's fine. And you have to, you have to be realistic about it and realize that it's fine and so you can graciously move through these interactions instead of like holding on to them and like I said like people can be equivalent to drugs if you allow them to be um, I used to get really attached and involved in people who were not willing or did not have the capacity to reciprocate you know as much as I could and you know I think if you go through enough of these heart-wrenching ordeals you learn eventually and I'm definitely learning so yeah just it's all about choosing what you want to invest in and eliminating things that are not in alignment with you and it's not personal you don't have to feel guilty about it you know, it's funny, um, I, I met someone and this person told me that you know, this person is charming and very generous of spirit and very entertaining on all levels, I mean, very stimulating on all levels. And again, like a drug, you know, very stimulating, very alluring. And he, this person told me that, you know, he would get into relationships for a you know a certain period of time I don't know how long it was however brief or however long that was and women would become heavily attached to him and when you know he was ready to move on they weren't and they would get weird about it I can understand that it's just because they have displaced expectations and they've allowed themselves to become heavily attached and dependent instead of just kind of like you know working on becoming a independent entity within themselves and just kind of like you know being able to sustain themselves or looking for sustenance elsewhere and when you know he would decide to leave they took it personally because of all the other things that they had attached to him and he couldn't understand that I mean the only reason why someone would be weird I feel is number one they're probably codependent and they're depending on you as sustenance they had also built up these false grandiose expectations in their head of what they thought the relationship the relationship should be and because it fell apart they were just kind of like left bewildered by it and um you know they're just kind of like at this threshold where they're trying to understand and you know figure out what just happened you know 
in between their idealistic delusions and what's realistically happening. What's what's happening is people move on. You know, they a lot of some people are highly exploratory, highly experimental, and they just kind of want to like be with someone for a little while until they acquire whatever they acquired and then they move on, you know? And for someone who's looking for something more consistent, you know, that may be that may throw them off kilter, but I mean the re reality of it is not everybody is looking for consistency. Some people learn differently. In fact, all people learn differently, you know? And some people learn through consistency. Some people learn through spontaneity and it is what it is. So don't get too attached to anything. Um, And choose people who choose you. Everything else is just dust in the wind, I suppose. I know I sound highly logical, but I can be highly emotional, and I think that's the gift of being an INFJ. We can access both types of intelligence simultaneously and then come to a pretty accurate conclusion. I think the intellectual types have a hard time understanding their emotions, and so they're missing a really, really huge piece of the puzzle. And then people who are too emotionally inclined are not intellectual enough so they're missing a huge piece of the puzzle whereas we have acquired or we have the opportunity to acquire both pieces of the puzzle and then move on to a higher intelligence which is soul intelligence or the intuition or your gut feeling you know there's all, there's just so many types of intelligences and consciousness you know um a term that i learned was um peripheral consciousness. I use that often. Looks like I'm spacing out when in actuality I'm absorbing information in the form of energy on various levels and degrees all at once. And I enjoy using that consciousness. Um, Yeah, I can take, I can gauge a lot of things when I enter that mode of I don't know, intelligence or that state of mind. Anyways, this is running on long. Thanks for listening to this ramble. I hope you learned something. If you learned something cool, if you didn't, that's cool too. Tomato, tomato. Blessings to one and all.